In the context of a training exercise between Home Guard volunteers and the Army, the actual day was kept secret, though the intelligence service were on their toes. Soon soldiers on foot and in cars were seen snooping around the village, examining approaches and asking leading questions. The inhabitants quickly poured forth an astonishing amount of inaccurate information, while the village children shadowed the soldiers with maddening persistence. Fifth columnist appeared, one was knocked out by the village fast bowler getting him in the face with a sand bomb, and the cartload of spies thought they could deceive an agricultural village by driving a cart loaded with hay in the middle of August and pulled by a foreign horse. It was unfortunate for the officer, concerned that he had never learned the scout trick of looking above eye level. And therefore, while he was explaining to his platoon their plan of attack with imagining and zeal out of sight of the village, he failed to notice the small wolf cub in the tree directly above him. No sooner had his earnest officer withdrawn with his men when the boy slid down and lit out for his home and father and breathlessly, but with much detail, recited his piece. At 2100 hours, the enemy launched his main attack to the center. They came under fire, blanks, from the home guard, flanks, and center, but came in without any pause towards the oast houses, where they were to billet for the night. Nothing would stop them. The umpire was unheeded. The casualties advanced even farther than the rest of the attackers and their standing corn out of bounds, was about to be entered. The home guard commander acted instantly. It was no use firing blanks. So Northover projectors were loaded up with green apples as hard as stones and fired into the advancing enemy. Molotov bottles were thrown high into the air and the platoon commander burst them one after another with a 12 bore game gun and number 8 shot. The light wind carried the smoke directly into the advancing enemy. The enemy's right flank was under fire from Northover projectors firing apples. Their left flank was receiving potatoes, and they were met in front by a blinding smokescreen accompanied by broken glass and a few stray shot pellets. It marked the end of a perfect summer day and they surrendered. I heard a story about my grandmother from when she worked a desk job in DC during World War II as a secretary. Some general or something came in out of uniform and wanted to go see whoever's office she was the secretary for. And being in civilian clothes, he didn't have proper ID. She told him to pound sand, and he got increasingly irate, swearing up and down that he's a four-star general, and he's killed 50 men, and he'll have her job, yada yada yada. And eventually left steaming mad because my stubborn cunt of a grandma wouldn't let him in. Later that day, he came back in full uniform, apologized profusely, and thanked her for doing her job correctly. The only part of the story that I really believe is how stubborn she was being. God bless you, Gertrude. On 18 July 1944, during a strategy conference in the Wolf Shanzi, a fly began buzzing around the room, allegedly landing on Hitler's shoulder and on the surface of a map several times. Irritated, Hitler ordered Darges to dispatch the nuisance. Darges suggested that, as it was an airborne pest, the job should go to the Luftwaffe adjutant, Nicholas von Below. Hitler took Darges aside, dismissed him on the spot, and had him transferred to the Eastern Front. 